Well, hi, everybody, and welcome April 1st. It's April Fool's Day, and I've got to tell you, <clears throat> if you could see what I've been doing over the past hour to actually get on this broadcast, somebody played a real good April Fool's joke on me. I started off at the office, and then I couldn't find my webcam, and then I went home, and I found the webcam, but had a virus on my computer. Now I'm back at the office. This is a room you've never seen. This is actually my conference room. If you look up there, that's the screen that we use. Um, and we're going to be giving a dental implant lecture here next week. So um, anyway, it's good to be with you. This is the first time I've given a webinar now um, in about four months. So thanks for your, um, uh, for your nice comments on the, uh, on the webinars we have with our, our guest lectures. But now it's time for me again. Um, it's given me a good break. Uh, some of you know that I needed a break for a while, not from the AIP, not at all, but I have a little bit of a, a little bit of a, um, an injury problem, which I've recovered from very nicely. Thank you, and thanks for your, your good wishes on that. So everything is right back where it's supposed to be, and everything is doing well. I'm very happy we started with our new associate this week, Dr. Michelle Furtado, and uh, so now we have two periodontists in our office, as well as my son, uh, Matthew is a general dentist, and we're, uh, we're moving right along. We're very happy over that. And that's one reason why we feel that we can recommend to you what we're doing. You, many, many of you know that we've been working on this project, this um, independent uh, periodontist or primary care periodontist project for uh, now it's close to 12 years. And it um, took us a while to perfect it now that we've got it perfected, of course, now we're seeing our practice growing very, very well. And what we want to be able to make sure that you understand is that this can be done on a gradual basis. And so those, and we just had some new members, by the way, who just signed on this week, which is, which is fantastic. So um, understand, everything can go on a gradient. We don't have to do everything at once. I did this on a gradient, and I'm teaching it to you on a gradient. And Danielle's teaching it to you from a staff and, 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 and a patient perspective uh, on a gradient as well. You can introduce any one of these programs that we're doing. Preferably start with program number one and move through to program now. I believe this is program 21 or 22. And if you start sequentially, start at the beginning and just move forward, you're going to get there. You're going to get there very, very well, um, just as we have. It's interesting, those of you who have read um, AAP Connect, and by the way, most everybody here is an AAP member. In fact, I think everybody who's a member of the AAIP is a member of the AAP. I would suggest you get on to AAP Connect because what has, uh, has occurred is that many people are talking now about periodontist as gatekeeper. Isn't that neat? Periodontist as gatekeeper. Um, so it's catching on, and it is going to catch on, and uh, we're just going to make sure that we, uh, we help people in the AAP as much as we possibly can. I will be at the meeting in Chicago uh, on May 2nd, I believe, and so uh, those of you who are there, I'd love to talk with you, chat with you, and, uh, and share ideas with you. Um, we're winding up for this year. You know, the, the year, the AAIP year will be over at the end of May, believe it or not. And so then we start our second year. Our second year is going to be totally different from our first year. Our first year has been the didactic program. Essentially what we've done is to give you modules, specific modules, as we talked about, sequentially, on how to introduce uh, changes into your practice in order to become more independent. So really this is the didactic program. This will be archived. This will be um, sold as a didactic program, just uh, as you have bought it as a, as a didactic program. And now we move on to year two. And we're actually considering what we want to do for year two. But there's a couple of ideas that we have. I want to run them by you. And I'm going to be running a little survey shortly because I really do need your feedback. I want to know what you want. Because just because they are my ideas or Danielle's ideas doesn't mean that that's uh, going to serve you best. And of course, that's the reason we're doing this, is to help you recreate your periodontal practice. So here are the ideas. Number one is we're going to run some kind of a continuous, continuing seminars, but it's going to be seminars on topics of the day. In other words, the didactic sections are over, but we're having individual um, uh, problems or individual needs or times are changing, and we'll talk about that. We'll do that on a teleseminar basis uh, on the phone um, 
which makes it nice because we'll be able to do it on the phone, we'll be able to archive it for you, and if you're able to listen to it live and you can participate, you can participate with us, well, that's great. But if not, we'll be able to have a website for you to uh, go to so that you can look, uh, so you can listen to these and download these um, these teleseminars that we'll be doing monthly uh, on a regular basis. The other thought um, that we've had, and we, we, we hope you'll like that, is to take some particular topics from the AIP, some topics that you've enjoyed and topics that you want to implement and actually run workshops right here or in Orlando or someplace where we can get together and have concentrated workshop sessions with the whole goal of your going home having implemented the particular program while you're here. So really what I want to know from you is what programs of the, from the AAIP are the most, most popular programs for you? Or what programs are most difficult to implement where you say, if I come here for a weekend and I bring my office manager or other staff members for a weekend, what do you want to bring home from that weekend? And of course, um, based on your surveys, we'll be able to decide the workshops that we'll run and uh, we'll be able to decide on that program uh, and make it more concrete. So we still have the month of April, we still have the month of May, so we're, in, we're not done with this year yet, so let's move forward with this year and let's talk about something that may sound a little strange to you, but I think it's, it's, it's fairly important, that is how to run a webinar. So here we are, we're doing a webinar. How do you do that? So let me change a few configurations here so I can get into my particular system. And there we go. So we're going to talk about the webinar and the teleseminar. All of you have participated in them. And uh, let's move forward from there. And the first thing I want to talk to you about is not the webinar or the teleseminar at all. I want to talk to you about a webcam. I'll tell you a story. In 1990, a, the husband of one of my assistants wanted to, be, wanted to start directing a TV program right here in Melbourne, Florida. He was going to do that associated with Time Warner Cable at that time. It's now Bright House Network, but, but Time Warner Cable. And he wanted me and asked me to be in the front of the camera so that he could be behind the camera. Do you know what it's like talking into a camera? Those of you who are seeing this live right now, you have a particular advantage because you can see me on the screen and you know that I'm looking right at you. There's an awful lot of practice that takes, that, 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 that we can benefit from just by looking at a camera. Most of us are used to lecturing, we're either used to talking to patients, or we run case conferences, or we do um, conf conferences for fellow, uh, or fellow doctors, general dentists, and your study clubs, and we're used to talking with people. Talking to a camera can be a bit intimidating. Staring into that black lens can be intimidating, but I've got to tell you. Getting that skill and getting that skill down can make a tremendous difference for you. Being able to look at the camera to be able to communicate with people can make a tremendous difference to your patients who you may want to do a video for. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you, number one, to make sure that you have a, um, a, a uh, webcam, but then I want you to participate with a webcam. Excuse me just a second, I just want to make sure that I'm getting messages that don't apply. Okay, good. Yes. All right. I just want to make sure you were hearing me. I thought my office manager might have said I can't hear you, which would have been the best April, April Fool's joke. Oh, so, so we're back. Now, the webcam that I'm using right now is the same webcam that I'm using, and that's what's up on the screen. The screen is the uh, HD Pro Webcam C920. Uh, you can get it for less than that, but let's say $100. It has great audio as, great, as well as great uh, video capabilities. And what I would encourage you to do is to get the webcam and start using it. Start looking at the webcam and start making up speeches. Just really become accustomed to that. It's going to increase your speaking skills not only into the camera, but it's also going to in increase your, uh, your confidence and your public speaking skills when you're going out to the public. So for example, um, in January, we ran a program on the dental implant lecture. 
Well, you're going to feel more comfortable with a dental implant lecture by giving dental implant lectures. And Scott Westermeyer's program is just tremendous. We're going to be doing Scott Westermeyer's program. We're going to actually have the Scott Westermeyer's program now. And we're going to be doing our first two implant lectures using uh, Scott's program on April 7th and April 9th. So, uh, and, and by, we, we've got the program. It's a tremendous program. So for those of you who bought it, that's great. Uh, I, I think you're going to get a lot out of it. For those of you who don't, now that we've seen the program ourselves, it's, it, it is very, very well done. And we'll make your dental implant seminar uh, that much more effective. So that's the webcam. So go buy one and start playing with one. The next step is to start using that webcam and seeing how you look. And so if you go to YouTube uh, and you push the upload button, you'll actually see yourself on the screen. So the next step is to go to youtube.com and push upload, seeing that right with the arrows pointing right on the upper right side. And then you have the opportunity of going to the next page and you have a number of different things you can do, but one is webcam capture. And so you push the webcam capture button and then you have the opportunity of actually using a webcam. And so there I am. There I am in a den. As you can see, that den is being used for a lot of things. And we don't want to necessarily have you see what's in this background. Nor do we want our patients to see that. So you see this little screen right there? I think we bought that at Walmart. I'm not sure. We you can buy screens like this at a lot of different stores. Not very expensive. You can change this configuration to this. And now, just by putting in, taking a screen, which I'm sure costs well less than hundred dollars, you can create something that's more professional, and you don't have to worry about cleaning every shelf and cleaning cleaning the entire room. This then gives you the opportunity of doing uh, a nice professional video. Some of you have seen my videos. Videos uh, I've sent some videos to you. For those of you who want to see some of the videos we've done, just drop me an email at aipsheldon at gmail.com. You'll see some videos that we do for patients, uh, patient that, that we use for uh, non-surgical periodontal therapy. We're planning to use the periscope that we use for patients. I've done one, uh, I believe, on dental implants. There are, are there are a few, and so while patients might be waiting for me in the operatory, we can just click on the YouTube video, and they can watch me say whatever it is that I say. My assistants use that a lot. So I encourage you to use that. Get get your public speaking skills now. Understand that we are positioning ourselves as leaders, and we always have been as periodontists. But part of being a leader, one of the things that makes you a leader is actually your ability to communicate. And people are expecting communication by video now. You know? Yes, I encourage everybody to write, and I want you to write papers, and I want you to write your book. Of course, we talked about that earlier this year. But communication by video is something that, that we, we, can, we can all do, and it's only a skill that we have to perfect a little bit to make sure that we're communicating well with patients and if, if by video. If you're communicating well with patients already directly, well, this is just one more step to uh, increase that ability, okay? So let's talk about the webinar and the teleseminar. And the purpose of the webinar and teleseminar for you and me is to communicate the ideas of the AAIP. The purpose of the webinar and the teleseminar for patients is a totally different purpose. Example, let's assume that you're going to give, uh, let me go back into that for a second. So part of that is you've already produced content. So if you've produced a PowerPoint presentation or somebody has helped you create a PowerPoint presentation. So you already have the content produced. And the question then is, how can you increase the numbers of people who see your content? Well, you can add a webinar to traditional advertising. So let's assume that we're going to do an implant lecture. If we're doing an implant lecture to people who are sitting right in this room, that's a certain group of people who happen to be, make it, who happen to be able to make it to your office at a particular time in order to be able to give that webinar. 
there's a whole group of people who may not be available when you're available. Yet you still want to be able to have the opportunity of communicating to them. And so you want another way of distributing the same material that you've already that you already prepared. You've done a lot of work to create the PowerPoint presentation. Let's come up with another way of doing that. And so you're at, when you're advertising your dental implant seminar, the dental implant seminar is advertised. We can see right here, there's the lecture that's advertised. But if you can't make it to the lecture, call our office, give us your email address, and we'll send you a link to the webinar. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to give the dental implant lecture and the webinar at the same time. You'll have to reserve a separate time for the webinar. But in a half an hour, you'll be able to give the same presentation to people all over the country, all over the world. Who knows who's going to uh, tune into the webinar? I can tell you that uh, one of the webinars that we did, um, I, and I think I've told you this once before. We did the webinar. We advertised it on our website. We, we, we advertised it to everybody in our email address list and, and for those of you who knew you uh, and those of you who are around and who've been around for a while and you know one important part of what we're doing when we're doing promotion we're trying to stay ahead of the group is making ahead of everyone is to make sure that we're da doing data collection everybody who calls everybody's interested everybody's made a, made a phone call to us whether they're they have made an appointment with us or not we should have their email address and hopefully all their contacts and we put this email address in as part of our database so that when we're advertising our teleseminar or our webinar, we're not just doing a newspaper, we're not just doing a radio and TV or whatever else you're advertising. We're also sending it to that email list, that email list of people who have already demonstrated that they're interested in us. All right, they may not have decided to get the procedure done at the particular time that you said that they're ready, but how many times have you seen a patient a year, two years, five years later, and the person says, I'm ready? Well, one reason they call you back is because somehow your, your, your image and your name and your experience, their experience in your office was indelibly etched in their minds. But sometimes people need to be reminded that you were the one who provided them with experience. One way we do that is to send a newsletter out to people on our email list just to keep your name prominent, prominent to them. And so when they're ready, they will come and they'll see your teleseminar. You'll send that out as part of your newsletter and they'll see your teleseminar is going to be done on such and such a date. And they'll call, they'll ask for the link, you'll email the link to them and they can, and they can tune in the teleseminar. So the story was that a patient from Baltimore, and you know I'm in Florida, a patient from Baltimore who he was going to be moving to Florida sometime in the next 10 or 11 months decided to get on my webinar. And she moved about 150 miles away from me. It's not somebody who would ordinarily see me from 150 miles away. But because she saw my webinar, she decided to get her dental implants done with me. That's full upper, full lower. So this can have a very, very, very good effect and a beneficial effect. So people tune into your webinar, and then they have the, have the opportunity of seeing you just like you're seeing me. So how do you do it? The importance of advertising a webinar or teleseminar can't be overemphasized. In 30 minutes, you have the opportunity to present all of your material, everything you know. You can do it longer than that. Your webinars, webinars that we're doing with you are roughly 45 minutes. Sometimes they're going closer to an hour, um, depending upon the topic. But in a half an hour, you can present some pretty good material, and somebody can be tuning in at home and listening to that material or watching that material, and then call and make, make an appointment with you um, if they can't attend your regular seminar. Okay. So I use GoToWebinar. GoToWebinar is a... This is by Citrix, citrix.com. Um, uh, there's go to meeting and there's go to my PC and there's go to webinar. You can sign up for a free trial with a web, for a webinar um, and, and give a webinar. You have 30 days to actually give a webinar or as many webinars as you want in a 30 day period of time with no charge. After that period of time, they're charging about $85 per month um, to maintain your webinar service. If you want, 
If you're only going to give one webinar, you can pay $85 for that webinar, and you've got it for the month. And then if you're not going to give another webinar for three months, you can sign up again three months later and pay another $85 at that time. You don't have to run a continuous subscription for a year, of course, with the number of webinars that I give. Of course, we run a, we run a, a continuous uh, subscription. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to give your name and you're going to use your, you know, you'll come up with um, your email, whatever your email address is and password. And sure enough, you've signed on. You can start your trial. And that's how we'll get started. Once you do that, there are online tutorials that will show you exactly how to run a webinar. And you start doing that. You start practicing it. Um, and within a short period of time, you'll get good at it because you've already got the PowerPoint material anyway. Um, and if you don't, please create some. Just do that. If you don't know how to use PowerPoint, find somebody who does and get some pictures, get some x-rays, get some before and after photos of your patients and start showing some of the things that you can do. I'll give you a hint. Blood and guts is not something that people want to see. People want to see smiling faces. That's what they want to see. And if you want to show them a contrast of how bad it looked before and how good it looks now, that's even better. People want to see technology. So if you happen to have, to have some technology in your office, whatever that technology is, CT scan, PRGF, PRF, or whatever, whatever blood enhancement pro, um, um, uh, technique you're using, um, whatever it is that you've got, whether it's a, a laser or whatever it is, they want to see your technology. So take a picture of the technology, put it up in the PowerPoint. Think of the things that, that, that are really special, that makes you different put them up on a PowerPoint. If you're not certain, um, and sometimes I'm not, I'm really not, well, who do I ask? I ask my wife, I ask my staff, what's important? And then we put a picture of that and we put that up in the PowerPoint. Essentially, then you've created a nice little star. So if you're going to give it your own dental implant seminar and you haven't bought Scott's program, although I'm telling you, buy Scott's program, it's worth it. I know it seems like it's expensive, but it's worth it. He does a beautiful job, but if you're going to do your own, create something and start to tell the story with it and rehearse it. Rehearse it right into the webcam the way I am right now, the way I'm talking right now, and be able to, and, and, and start to create your own little talk that you can give. So then you'll be giving to a live audience, and maybe the next day you'll do it via webinar. Okay, you'll see that when you're scheduling a webinar, you can schedule it at any time of the day that you want. Um, you can write a description so you, you know that you get your promo from me. Um, essentially, I write, the, I write the description right here. I set the time of the webinar. Um, you can adjust it depending upon your, your time zone. And then you just push schedule and you schedule the webinar. Now, this, now that particular time is reserved for your webinar. In addition, those people who are on your mailing list, you then send that information to them. Okay, so what you can do is you can copy and send a link. So you can push select all right here. It'll pick, pick up the link. It'll pick up the description of your webinar. And you can copy that and then paste that into the email that you're going to, uh, that you're going to use. And, of course, then we can talk about how to start. You'll see how to start the, start the uh, webinar. And there is a way you can practice it without going online. So um, it'll take a little bit of time, maybe... 20 minutes, half hour to get used to the entire program, um, but very simple to run. Of course, better than what's better than being able to do it at no charge. So what a great opportunity! So this is um, the, the, this is what what you'll see as you go through the sequence, and you'll copy the webinar information, highlight it like that by pushing select all, then push control C, which copies it, and then push control P, um, I'm sorry, control V, which will then paste it into your email and then send it out. Okay? Good. Now, important, I think you all know protocol, um, if you're sending out to a lot of strangers, uh, you put them under blank carbon copy. Use the BCC so that other people don't see the other people that you're communicating with. It's a privacy issue. So um, 
So it has to be addressed to one person, but um, and that can be yourself, by the way, as you can see here. And then every other person can be under BCC or blind carbon copy. So you get that, and you've gotten that, and many of you registered. Sometimes you decide not to register at the last minute. But there's a real uh, advantage to registering because that way you have then um, identified who's going to be on your program. You can prepare for that person a little bit. Uh, you, can, you can send that person a reminder by email. Actually, once a person is registered, go to webinar actually sends those, those, those reminders automatically. But it's nice that you have a record of the, patient, of the potential patient's name and email address, and that record stays in perpetuity. Um, the idea, of course, is to increase that list and so you find as many people as you can who might be interested to attend the webinar. And then once those people have attended the webinar, they may not make an appointment right away, but you can put them into your drip marketing campaign meaning your newsletter and those things that you do on a regular basis. And the bigger the list is, the more people you're communicating with. And those are people that are already expressed an interest in you anyway. Even if they called and never made an appointment, they expressed an interest. The bigger the list, the more outflow you have, the better the opportunity there is for patients to call you. Now, Danielle usually does it a different way. Rather than running a webinar, she does a teleseminar. A teleseminar can be done absolutely free. There's absolutely no charge for teleseminar as long as you're not using an operator-assisted teleseminar. If you're using a teleseminar that's run from a website, and there are a number um, of these available, the, ones, the one that we use, as you can see, is freeconferencecalling.com. Freeconferencecalling.com. And you can just register, you can create an account, and then just by speaking on the phone, you can run your own teleseminar. Now, as you notice, it's a little bit different. Two people don't make reservations in advance for teleseminar. Essentially, you send the link, and there's a link that's created by freeconferencecalling.com, which you copy, and the link is only a phone number and a password or a set of numbers that gets you into this peculiar conference, you send it out to those people who uh, you want to attend and they're going to um, register. And I can see the phone numbers of the people who are actually uh, on, that, on that call. I said register, that's not registered. They actually call at the particular time. So if we're doing a teleseminar, meaning a phone seminar at uh, 9 p.m. on April 8th, then at 9 p.m. April 8th, everybody who's interested calls in, and we begin the teleseminar. I believe Danielle's is going to be at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on April 15th, tax day. Um, April 8th? Yeah, April 15th. I believe that's what she's going to be doing the next one. And so then we can see who's on there, and if you push five star using this particular system, we can see that you want to talk, and then we can click on you. We can unmute your your phone receiver, and then we can talk with you and we can answer your questions or talk with you in whatever way uh, um, we've decided uh, together to, um, to communicate with each other at this teleseminar. Okay? So that is what um, we do with a webinar and teleseminar. I would encourage you, or really do encourage you, to start using a webcam and start getting used to doing some of the things we're doing here. Remember, as periodontists, we are the leaders. We are the leaders in dentistry. We do have the scientific approach. We have a biologic basis for treatment planning. And there is a reason for complex dental patients to see us first. Of course, there's a good reason for periodontal disease patients to see us first so that we can do diagnosis, we can do treatment planning. But part of getting people to come in first is to communicate, whether we're doing it by writing or whether we're doing it by uh, verbal communication or telecommunication as we're doing t tonight. Every bit of communication or every different communication line that you have is going to be more beneficial to you and is going to increase your ability to, uh, to uh, communicate out in order to be, uh, bring people in. So I thank you for joining us on this uh, webinar. Danielle will be with you in a couple of weeks. And watch for that survey. Watch for that survey. I'd be very, very interested to know what you have to say. 
Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Let me see. Is there anybody with a question? Just raise your hand on your screen if there's anybody who has a question here. And I will stay with you for a second and see if any hands are raised. And no, not seeing any hands. I guess that's the end of, of tonight's AIP uh, teleseminar or, or webinar on webinars and teleseminars. Thanks for being a part of this. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your being a part of this, being a part of this with us. We are making a difference, um, and uh, people are going to um, say, you, you, you were the pioneers in establishing a new track uh, to recreate your periodontal practice. Thanks. Look forward to seeing you soon.